In this video, we're going to get an overview of Maven. So in this video series, you're going to learn how to use Maven for creating projects within Eclipse. We'll also learn how to add dependencies to our Maven palm.xml file. We'll learn how to build and run Maven projects. We'll also develop Maven projects for both Java apps and Spring applications. And then we'll learn how to import existing Maven projects. And finally, we'll learn how to run Maven from the command line. And again, we'll break all this up over separate videos and we'll do everything step by step. And the focus of this video series is on practical results. So I'll cover the most common Maven tasks that you'll need on daily projects. Now, this is not an A to Z reference. Uh, for that, you should see the Maven reference manual. Uh, but don't worry, I'm going to give you links to the actual Maven reference manual. I'll also give you links to three Maven ebooks. And finally, I'll give you a link to a Maven cheat sheet. And these are all free resources that you can access online. Alrighty, so here are the links to the Maven resources. So the Maven reference manual is available at this Love to Code website. It'll redirect you to the official Maven reference manual. There's also links here for Maven ebooks. So again, love to code.com slash Maven ebooks. Again, redirect you to a site where you can read the ebooks for free online. And finally, a Maven cheat sheet. So it's a PDF that you can download. Just a quick reference guide to help you moving along with Maven. And these are all free resources. And don't worry about having to write this down. I'll have a text document after this lecture that includes all of these links. So you can simply click the link and go directly to those uh, websites. Alrighty, so what is Maven? Well, Maven is a project management tool for your application. So the most popular use of Maven is for build management and dependencies. So what problems does Maven actually solve? Well, when you're building your Java project, you may need additional jar files like Spring jar files, Hibernate jar files, so on and so forth. And one approach is to simply download those jar files from each project website. And then you'll manually add those jar files to your build path or your class path. So here's how my project would work without Maven. So I have my super cool app. I'm going to need the Spring jar files, Hibernate, Commons logging, and so on. And then so me, the developer, I actually need to go to each one of these project websites and download them. So I need to download the spring jar files, hibernate jar files, commons logging. If I'm doing any JSON work, I need to pull those jar files down also and then manually add those to my build path. Now, Maven can actually help us with this process and do a lot of this work for us. So the Maven solution is that you simply tell Maven the projects you're working with, spring, hibernate, and so on. And Maven will actually go out and download those jar files for you from the internet. And then Maven will make those jar files available during compile and runtime. So you can kind of think of Maven as like your friendly helper or your personal shopper. You simply give them a shopping list. They'll go out on town, purchase everything for you and bring it back for you to make use of, which is really cool, I think. <laughs> So here's how our project would work with Maven. So there's a Maven central repository that's remote. It's on the internet. And then we have our super cool app. We simply tell Maven, hey, here's our shopping list. So me, the developer, I write out my shopping list. I give it to Maven. And then Maven will go off and download the spring jar files, the hibernate jar files, commons, JSON, and anything else. It'll download all that stuff and pull it to my computer and make it available for me to use. It's really, really cool. So that allows me, the developer, instead of having to do all that manual work, I can just kind of sit here and uh, drink my coffee. <laughs> Maven will go up and do the work, and then I can continue on coding once Maven's pulled everything down for me. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and dive in. So this is how Maven works behind the scenes. Using Maven, you have a project configuration file that Maven will read. So that's basically your shopping list. So Maven will read your config file. Then Maven will check a Maven local repository that resides on your computer. It's like your local cache. 
If you don't have the files in your local repo, then Maven will actually go out to the internet at the Maven Central Repository, which is remote, and it'll pull those jar files down from the Maven Central Repo on the internet. Then it'll save versions of those files in your local repository, so you can kind of build up your local cache. And then Maven will use that to build and run your application. So that's kind of the big picture on how Maven works. I'll talk more about repositories in a following video, but that's enough for us to kind of understand how Maven pulls things down uh, from the internet from the Maven Central repo. Now, as far as handling JAR dependencies, Maven will retrieve a project dependency and also any supporting dependencies. So if he says, hey, Maven, I need Spring. Well, Maven will also know that, oh, well, Spring depends on Commons logging. So let me go ahead and grab that one also. So any dependencies, they'll go ahead and grab those additional items. So Maven will do this for us automatically. And it's really cool how this feature works out. And finally, for building and running, uh, when you build and run your app, Maven will handle the class and build path for you. So based on the configuration file, Maven will add the appropriate jars accordingly. So you don't have to manually configure your class path. Simply set up the Maven config file and Maven will do all the work for you. And again, that gives you more free time to sit there and drink your coffee.